Alright, so I'm going to go over the basics you'll want to know for creating a battle map for D&D and similar games in uh, Clip Studio. This will be based around using the Forgotten Adventures assets, although it'll apply to most other ones as well. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Clip Studio Paint um, and then you will create your new image. You'll want it to be set at uh, the units in inches and the resolution at 200 and then from there you can put in how many grid squares you want it to be wide and high. So let's say we want a 15 by 15 map. Okay, there we go. Um, and you can toggle on and off a grid for help you with your positioning and laying um, by pressing Control G. Um, if it doesn't look like everything is the right size, you want to check in the view and grid ruler settings and make sure that it's set at um, one inch for the gap. And the number of divisions is up to you, but I like to keep it at four. Um, from there, the first thing you'll want to do is import some textures. Um, if you have seamless textures, uh, you can import them using the import menu here and go pattern from image, that'll automatically tile it. Or the other way to do it is to find your um, texture in the uh, file browser and you can drag and drop that directly into your layer panel here and that'll put it down on the um, canvas and you just have to tick the little tiling box down here and that'll make sure it covers everything. Um, from there another way you can access your materials is there's a built-in material browser here but the only way to get stuff into it is after you've imported a texture or asset onto the page is to drag the layer from here and drop it into the material browser from then on you'll be able to find it so obviously go stone there you go there's the one I just imported if I need to use it later on I can just drag it drop it into there it, it's a bit more convenient but it also takes a lot of time since you have to import every um, asset you want to drag them and drop them out of the uh, layers panel and unfortunately there's no mass import option for that um, so let's say we wanted to make a map with some grass I grab some grass and go like that um, and as you can see it's since it's a seamless tiling texture it takes up the whole map but obviously we don't want our whole map to be grass so what you do is you put on something called a layer mask and that you can add it with this button here it'll add it to this current layer I have selected so I add a mask there and then what you can do is if you select the mask by clicking this bit you can grab something like the pen tool or if you want something a softer blend um, the airbrush tool which is normally what I use for organic things like grass and then instead of selecting color you select this little checkered um, bar here which is the transparent option and you draw with transparent onto the canvas and that'll paint out um, where you don't want it to be. Um, if you do it the other way you could select transparent fill the whole canvas with the transparent by clicking this button up here and then you could select a color and draw in just where you want it if you want to go the opposite direction. Um, from there we also have brushes which are a very uh, powerful um, tool in Clip Studio. The way to import them is you get a little SUT file, you open up the decoration tool here um, and then you just draw it, I'll select the folder I want it to go in vegetation then you just simply drag and drop that into there and it inputs that there so now I've got a brush that I can click and it will put down 
Oh, I still have the mask selected. Make a new layer. And then if I just click, I can put down um, little funguses, which would be great for some trees. But let's make a little um, tree on this patch of grass. So we'll grab the brush I have that puts down tree stumps. Put down one right there. If I want it to be a bit bigger, I can make the brush a bit bigger. There we go, nice big tree stump. Um, then I can put on top some um, tree branches. I have some somewhere. Is this the one I want? Yes, there we go. But it's a bit small for that, so I'll make it a bit bigger. No, I need to make the particle size bigger. There we go. Um, there are also brushes that are great for things like walls or cliffs. I've got some in this tab here. Um, as you can see, they, as you drag, um, if you're using a mouse, will come out a bit janky, which, in which case you need to turn on this post correction option here. It probably slap that most of the way up. And then if you draw that, and then after you draw it, it'll smooth it back out again. Um, though they are direction dependent, so you want to go the right way around. And there you go, you've got a lovely little cliff. Um, if you want it to taper down at the end, you need to go down to this show sub show sub tool um, options. And then you need to go to starting and ending and turn it on by selecting brush size. Um, you can set this one wherever you like. That's just how small it's going to get at the end. Um, let's say about 10. And then if I draw now, it should taper down at the end. Um, sometimes you have to play a little bit with the settings to get it to look right because it isn't doing one end for some reason um, but that's all dependent on where you set these up yes there we go it's doing a bit too suddenly is the problem so maybe turn that up a bit there you go you pl play with that um, these are pretty easily uh, organized. If you want to make a new group up here, all you need to do is drag a brush up to here and you can drop it and it will make a new group. And if you want to rename it, you can right click and change the settings. Put that back there. And what else would I go to that? Uh, oh, if you want to do something like, um, say you want to draw your own shadows, I could get a brush that has this one here. It draws normally you'd use it for drawing bushes. Um, but I can change it and first of all draw a whole bunch above here, like it would be the tree canopy. And then here the slider changes the opacity of the layer so you can make uh, things transparent. Um, I accidentally drew it on top of the tree stump, so we're going to undo that, make new layer, draw them in, make that transparent, make that transparent, or if I say I wanted it to be black, um, I can hold down control and click on the layer and that will select it, and I make sure I have black selected as my colour and fill it, and make that a bit more transparent, there we go, a nice little shadow. Um, now there are also things called blending modes which changes the way this layer interacts with the layer below it. Um, the easiest way to show that would be to draw with a different color. So if I grab, um, let's make it red and we'll replace this shadow here with red and if I make that say multiply there we go so multiply um effectively mixes the color 
and the color below and comes up with a color, color darker than the sum of the two. Um, so something like multiply is great for putting something down like a uh, blood splatter. So I've got a little brush here that um, I can do blood. Um, maybe it's a bit too strong for you to turn down the opacity. Um, you, there's uh, lots of other great modes. Um, you'll find that you'll want to use stuff like um, soft light and overlay for lighting things. Um, if you have a nice orange um, color like this little brush here, that one uses uh, add. You'd, um, but normally the easiest way is to just find a color um, and just play around with a um, different mixture of blending modes and colors to see if you can get the effect you're looking for. Um, all right, um, one other set of brushes we have are a bunch of walls. As you can see we've got like a lovely um, interior, um, exterior wall for a house. You've got wood and uh, stone on the outside, wood on the inside. Um, but obviously you probably don't want to be drawing this by hand because you're not going to be able to draw perfectly straight lines for all your walls. So that's where the grid comes in um, because you can snap points to the grid by ticking this little box here. Um, that would let you draw kind of how you want but it would still be a little tedious to try and draw like that. Um, so what you can do is you go into the tool options and brush shape and you click this register to preset button um, and that adds it in here which um, we will see what it does in a minute you go down to figure and you can select the continuous curve tool is the easiest one to use and then now in the brush shape you will have that um, one you've registered you'll want to select this quadratic brazier bezier um, button and set the brush size to the size of the brush you've registered so that one's 100 so we are perfectly set up for that already and now all, all I need to do is click and drag um, if I want to do a corner the best way to do it is to click on um, one point then click again and do another one for your little corners because that rounds it off it, you'll see that if you just do a click and then go like that it, it doesn't um, bend the way you might expect uh, um, you can just hit enter to finish that um, let's do that again let's say there's a little wall for a building down here dun, dun, dun. goes over there click 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 enter got a nice little wall um, one thing that makes working with the figure tool um, even easier is if instead of making a normal raster layer to draw on you use this vector layer option so if we make the same wall again but with a vector layer um, da, da, that means that oop, if I later decide actually I didn't want it to um, look like that I can actually select it and I can see the points that it was made with so I can actually edit them afterwards like, oh actually I wanted the wall to curve out a little bit or wanted this point to be over there it, it, it's not the greatest for walls like this but say if you were doing a nice cliff um, you know, rocky cliff and you draw it out Oh, I have the grid snapping turn on. If you turn that off, something natural like this. 
screw it, I got a nice cliff there. And I decided actually, I didn't like this point. It's a bit too sharp. I can nudge bits in um, without having to redraw the whole the whole line. Um, yes, is there anything else? There's some vector editing tools if you go to this correct line thing down here it can do some great things like simplifying lines so if I go over that vector I've drawn and then I click that again you see it's got a lot less control points now so it can make it a little bit easier to edit after you've drawn something um, if I wanted to join the ends of a line so say I had drawn two separate lines um, or I'm using a mouse and um, I need to join something post drawing it. Um, I can draw, so I have two different cliffs, draw one here and another here, and I decide I want them to connect. As long as they're above each other, the ends there, I can select the um, connect vector line tool. And if I draw over the ends of those, hopefully they should connect. Um, as you can see, it's messed itself up a bit because they weren't joined particularly well. Um, so I might use the simplify over the top. They might smooth it out a bit. I might just need to move one of the points. There we go. Now it's one big line instead of two. Um, you can see that that end is still... Uh, doesn't doesn't fade down as nice as it could. You can grab the correct line width tool, and you can make things thicker or narrower with these. Um, so I can maybe I want to scale down the end a little bit. I can go like that, and it'll make it a bit smaller. Each time I click on it, it'll make it a tiny bit smaller, depending on what your scaling down is set to. I can keep clicking, and it'll get smaller and smaller. Um, the opposite is true if you use up, obviously. Um, yeah, I think that's gone over most of the basics. Um, if there's any other things I should add in, drop me a question and I might make more if it comes in useful to anyone. Um, yeah.